So hello everyone, this is Ahmed Ibrahim. And today I'm glad to have this presentation for my lens and shade thesis. of titled uh, Selected Topics on Reconfigurable Intelligent Surfaces. So the outline of this talk will be as follows. First, I will give uh, like a brief introduction to reconfigurable intelligent surfaces, risk, uh, fundamentals. And after that, I'll uh, mention our thesis contribution and list the four paper included in this uh, thesis. And after that, I will go through each paper individually, uh, like give a brief uh, uh, like uh, talk about uh, the main idea and a sample of uh, its uh, result in the last four points. So the architecture of the RIS is uh, as shown in uh, this uh, figure. It's like a two-dimensional surface, a planar surface that is composed of a unit cell, multiple unit cells, and connected to a smart controller. Uh, the main uh, the unit cell represents the main uh, constructed component in uh, the RIS, while the role of the smart controller is to adapt the interaction of the RIS towards the impinging gradient. Uh, the research field behind building the RIS, uh, the RIS uh, is the research field of metamaterial. This research field is interested in uh, building materials uh, of reconfigurable electromagnetic wave properties that doesn't exist in natural materials. And that's why the RIS is known as the meta surface, uh, in addition to many other names, such as an uh, intelligent reflecting surface, uh, large intelligent surface, digitally controllable scatters, and software controllable surface. Uh, similarly, the unit cell is known as the meta atom, uh, or more simply, uh, it can be said as a reflecting element or scattering element. In order to allow the configuration of uh, and the reconfiguration of the RIS a response towards the impinging radio wave in real time, each unit cell is connected to a tuner chip. This tuner chip can be, for example, beam dials, uh, varactor, MEMS switch, or a mixture of, of some uh, sheet electronic circuit. The basic idea is that uh, each unit cell has a sub lens dimension, so the lens and width of each unit cell is uh, commonly between uh, lambda over two and lambda over 10. So where lambda is the wavelength of the incident signal. So given the small uh, dimension of uh, the unit cell, uh, we can represent its response by uh, an equivalent circuit as shown in this figure. Where uh, each unit cell is connected to a tuner chip and the role of this tuner chip is to adjust its load impedance, to set the load impedance of the unit cell. So due to the impedance discontinuity between the free space wave and the unit cell impedance, each unit cell can induce a controllable uh, reflection coefficient as shown in this equation gamma, where Z represents the controllable load impedance of the unit cell that we can adjust given the state or the pulse voltage of the tuner chip. And Z node represents like uh, the free space impedance, which is constant. So for instance, if we have a pin diode that is attached to the unit cell as a tuner chip, it has two states of operation, on state and off state. And on state, it will act like a uh, uh, short circuit and then off state, it will act like an open circuit. So we can induce a phase shift in the two states uh, of pi or zero respectively. In addition, if we'd like to have a full phase shift of control for the friction coefficient of each unit cell, we can replace this pin diode by a reactor, which will give us uh, freedom to change the load impedance continuously between zero and infinity. And at this moment, we can like uh, induce a phase shift to continuous between zero and two pi. And um, moreover, if we would like to control the amplitude of friction coefficient, we can attach a variable resistance, resistor to each unit cell, uh, like to control the amount of energy dissipated in this particular unit cell. So in short, the RIS can control the reflection coefficient, amplitude, and phase of each unit cell individually. And we did this control by uh, the smart controller. So the smart controller is a simple microcontroller that just sets the bias voltage of the tuner chip to achieve the uh, reflection coefficient required for each unit cell individually. And moreover, one of the major advantages of uh, RIS is it's a highly energy efficient unit as it doesn't consume. Uh, any power for transmission uh, because it doesn't have a uh, 
power amplifier, an RF chain, or any complex signal processing capability. And that's why the RIS is uh, widely known as uh, nearly passive RIS, as it only consumes power for controlling the state of the curable chip, but not any power for transmission. Uh, like the main idea behind the most of the application related to RIS is that the RIS can be used to uh, build a small and energy efficient smart radio environment through like uh, the first five generation of uh, wireless communication. We always uh, look at the propagation environment as it is uncontrollable component in the whole communication process. And our main interest in this kind of classical uh, communication is to like uh, develop a sophisticated technique at the transmitter, at the receiver, just to compensate the effects and the impairments that occur in the RF channel, like shadowing, fading, attenuation. But now I have the RIS is like a new player to the whole communication pr uh, process. And this RIS can like shape the radio wave between the transmitter and receiver by configuring its like refraction. It's like uh, smart scatters in the environment. So we can use the RIS to create a smart radio environment, which is main concept that the environment is generated by nature from the scatters that exist in the environment, but it's controlled by design, by deploying some RIS uh, in the environment. And using, depending on this idea of a smart radio environment, we can like uh, solve some of the limitations that exist in the RSA channel, and you can also like emerge a new application which uh, have never existed in the classical uh, communication. So now I speak about our uh, thesis uh, contribution. So in this thesis, we study three different topics related to risk in uh, four different papers. So in paper uh, A, we like uh, solve a fundamental limitation that usually occur uh, in point to point MIMO communication when it deployed in line of sight environment. Uh, depending on the risk. And in paper B, we will try to study the positional impact of the risk when it's used to assist a size of communication system, a single antenna system, and when it deployed also to assist multiple antenna system. And in paper C and paper D, we propose to use the risk as an access point for information transfer. So the risk itself will act like as a part of transmitter. It has uh, some source of data and we would like to send this data to a certain uh, receiver. And we achieve this by performing in paper C, uh, polarization, conventional polarization shifting, and in paper D by achieving or uh, performing differential polarization shifting. So now I speak about our uh, first paper, paper A, RISES for MIMO communication in line of sight environment. So uh, in point-to-point -point MIMO communication, the propagation environment has an important role on the channel capacity we get. And in case of uh, rich scattering environment, the channel entries are commonly modeled as uh, independent and identically distributed, really fading each channel. And at this moment, the channel matrix become full rank, which means that the spectral multiplexing become possible. The spectral multiplexing of independent data stream uh, from different transmit antenna, at the same time, frequent resource become possible. And this result in, in substantial capacity gains. However, the situation is uh, much different in case of line of sight environment. And in this environment, there is only one uh, pause between the transmitter and the receiver, and there is no scatters or reflector uh, in the environment. So just single pause. And this uh, kind of environment commonly happened in case, uh, for example, in rural communication, and also millimeter wave communication, which uh, commonly uh, like face problem uh, from the uh, obstacle. So in this scenario, the channel uh, matrix become rank one matrix, uh, and this makes the spectral multiplexing uh, unattainable. And the benefits of uh, MIMO communication at this moment dimension to merely a power gain. So in order to see the effect of the environment on the channel capacity achieved. In this figure, we simulate here the ergodic capacity versus the number of transmit antenna, which is set equal to the number of received antenna. For uh, the two environments, line of sight in red and rich scattering in black at SNR equal 15 dB. So this performance gap is due to one thing. In case of the line of sight, the rank of channel is one, and it's only one uh, channel, one uh, stream, and it's only power gain. But in case of uh, uh, red, uh, 
flag, it's like uh, multiple sub channel equal to minimum NT and R. Uh, so in order to restore back the special multiplexing gain in case of line of sight environment, we propose the use of randomly distributed reconfigurable intelligent service uh, with uh, this point-to-point -point line communication. The role of uh, this uh, research will uh, is to act as uh, or to act uh, is to act as artificial scatter and synthesize a sort of multi-path uh, propagation. So, in short, we like uh, convert uh, the line of sight environment into artificial rich scattering environment. And by this method, we like can improve the length of the channel matrix to restore back the spectrum multiplexing gain and could achieve like high capacity gain. So in this uh, paper, we assume that all the resources are exist far away from both the transmitter and the receiver. And we did this assumption because it's well known from the literature that in uh, MIMO communication, uh, the length of the channel matrix is not only limited by the minimum number of transmit and receive antenna, but it also uh, limited by the number of passes uh, between the transmitter and receiver that has distinct spatial angle. So for the sake of uh, rank improvement in this uh, scenario, we like uh, assume that there is exist far away from both the transmitter and the receiver, such that there is like a higher chance to uh, to, to for the pulses that created by different races and for the direct pulse to have distinct spatial angle. And in this paper also we show under this scenario that there is exist in line of sight environment and exist far away from both the transmitter and receiver that the race will simply mimics uh, a full duplex array. This full duplex array will uh, not only amplify the reflected signal on it without any noise amplification, but will also will do a fish shift compensation. So the the like uh, the risk will act as a as a surface with single effective reflection coefficient that uh, we can control uh, its amplitude and its phase also. And in this scenario, uh, the composite channel matrix will be as shown in, as, as shown in this uh, equation to the left, where H represents the composite channel, H node represents the direct channel, which is rank one. HL represents the channel matrix that result from the reflection on the L3, and we have L3. And HL can be represented uh, shown in this uh, formula, where AL represents the attenuation through this particular risk. TL, RL represents the transmit and receive res response vector for this uh, particular risk. And gamma L represents the effective reflection coefficient of the risk, uh, which, uh, of course, depending or depends on uh, the phase shifts of all the elements in this particular risk, as represented in this equation by phi LM, this is a phase shift that we can control. And psi LM represents the phase shift of the link through the M's element in the L's risk. So in this paper, we assume uh, like uh, uh, that we perfect channel street information at the transmitter and receiver. And our main goal is to tune the risk uh, such that we maximize the channel capacity, as shown in this equation, where as shown in this uh, P1, where uh, Q represents the transmit covariance matrix that uh, carry information about the pre-coding vector, vector and the power allocation, while gamma represents the effective reflection coefficient that we are going to set. Uh, P1 is shown to be a non-convex optimization problem, so we develop alternating optimization in uh, algorithm one, to suboptimally solve this problem, which solve for a single, a single parameter of the parameter we have here, uh, while the rest are set as constant. For example, it's solved for Q, while the rest of gamma are set as constant, or one gamma, while the rest of uh, uh, gamma and Q are set as constant. And by iteratively repeating this algorithm, we could reach to suboptimal solution. So, uh, instead, uh, this is like algorithm one, instead of uh, maximizing the channel capacity, we propose also to maximize the composite channel power over all the effective reflection coefficients, which will result also in an improvement to the shear rate. So we have here problem P2, where we maximize the composite channel power, and it's also non-convex optimization problem. So similar to algorithm one, we develop alternating optimization that solve for single effective reflection coefficient gamma k, while rest of gamma are set as constant. 
algorithm one and two are uh, two iterative algorithms. So we develop two other non-iterative algorithms. One simple algorithm is the confusing scheme. And this scheme, we like uh, set the reflection coefficient of each risk such that the uh, power of the channel matrix that results from the transmitted signal reflection on this particular risk are, uh, is maximized, which is shown here as a uh, power of matrix H of L maximizing over gamma L. And this is non-iterative uh, algorithm. And also we optimize another non-iterative algorithm which maximizes uh, the lower point of the composite channel power. Uh, so a sample of the simulation result is shown here. Uh, here we have a uh, simulation parameter is as shown in this table. We have a transmitter and receiver form linear array H4 antenna and we deploy 12 races and each race has uh, 225 elements. And we, in this figure, we simulate the outage capacity versus the SNR of the direct channel. And if we will compare it with the scenario when it's line of sight without any reason, we could see that uh, the four scheme proposed result in dramatic reduction in comparison to the scenario when it's just line of sight without reason. And the performance in descending order is as shown here. Algorithm one achieves the best, which is iterative. After that, algorithm two. After that, low, lower power of channel power maximization. After that, co-phasing scheme. And, and also, if you look at the slope of the outage uh, capacity versus the SMR, which is uh, uh, like uh, the definition of spectrum multiplexing gain, we could see that the four scheme proposed achieves spectrum multiplexing gain. So now I'll speak about our uh, second paper on the position of reconfigurable intelligent surfaces. So in this paper, we study the positional impact of the risk uh, on the achievable rate for single and multiple antenna system. When this risk is deployed to assist a single or a multiple antenna system. And in order to allow the coexistence of a uh, pulse line of sight channel and non line of sight channel, we assume rising Fading a channel model. And this gives us a uh, freedom to study the positional impact for a different propagation environment from line of sight environment till rich scattering environment. And also include uh, the post duration of operation of the risk, whether the risk is placed in the uh, near field with respect to the transmitter or receiver, or it's placed far away from uh, the transmitter or the receiver. So in uh, the case that the risk is used to assist a single antenna system or size for communication, the main uh, parameters that uh, quantify or uh, affect that channel capacity or the shiver rate is the signal to noise ratio, which is shown to be this equation, where P represents the transmitted power, sigma squared represents the noise variance, H node represents the direct channel, and U1 M, U2 M represent like as a normalized uh, rise and fading channel between the nth element in the risk to the transmitter and receiver. And eta m represents the larger scale fading channel of uh, the two hoop links through this particular mth element, which is simply the larger scale fading channel of the first hoop channel between the transmitter and the element, O1m, and the second hoop channel between the element and the receiver, O2m. Uh, if we look at the SNR uh, equation, we could see that the main parameters that re relate the position to the shearable rate, to the SNR, to the shearable rate is uh, uh, eta m. And we show that this eta m is shown in this uh, equation where delta square represents the effective, the physical area of the element. Epsilon m represents the effective area that is jointly seen from both the transmitter and receiver. And D1M, D2M represents the distance between the element to the transmitter and to the receiver. Uh, epsilon M mainly depending, which is the effective area that is jointly seen from both the transmitter and receiver, mainly depend on the orientation of the transmitter uh, and the, uh, in the, of the risk uh, with respect to the transmitter and receiver. So for given a particular location of transmitter receiver and risk, we can like uh, maximize this epsilon m. And more importantly, if we look at the epsilon m, we, uh, eta m, we'll find it like inversely proportional 
to the product of the distance D1M and D2M. <clears throat> so we could like say from this uh, relation that it's inversely proportional to the product of the distance that in order to achieve better larger scale fitting the channel and have higher SNR, so have better achievable rate, we should place the rate as close as possible to the transmitter or the receiver. And then in, uh, in this uh, slide, in order to validate our conclusion that uh, this should be placed close to the transmitter receiver, we simulate the achievable rate versus the position of the risk. We assume that the transmitter receiver are placed on uh, the Y axis with separation distance equal 50 meter and has a direct link of SNR equal 20 to P. And we assume that there is this place perpendicular to the X, Y plane and its central element coincident with uh, X, Y plane. And we will move the position of the rays for every possible position in the X, Y plane. And for each possible position, we adjust into its orientation such that we maximize the effective area the joint effective area that's seen from both the transmitter and receiver. And here we simulate, we compute the shareable rate for each possible XY position. Uh, this uh, figure represents the shareable rate versus the XY position. It's like a 3D curve, but we look at it from the plane view. So, and the color map represents the, the, the number, the capacity, shy capacity we get. So if we look at the lift curve, uh, figure, which is like for really fading the channel, and also look at the right figure for line of sight channel. We'll find that for both the channels, uh, like uh, the region that achieve good performance is the region which where the race is placed close to the transmitter receiver. So we conclude that in size of when the race is used to assist size of communication, we should place the race as close as possible to the transmitter or receiver. So now I speak about uh, the scenario when the race is used to assist AMIMO communication. And I will start with a special but very important scenario, uh, which is when the race is uh, placed in the in line of sight environment and it's placed in far field with respect to the transmitter and receiver. At this moment, under this uh, scenario, the composite channel can be shown to be this equation where the first term represents the direct channel and the second term represents the channel created through this. So our uh, row node represents the larger scale fading channel for this direct channel. And eta also represents the larger scale fading channel for the channel created through this. H1 node, H2 node represent like uh, the transmit and receive response vector for the direct channel. H1 IRS, H2 IRS represent transmit response vector, but for the channel through RIS. And omega represents like the effective reflection coefficient of this particular risk because there's a risk in line of sight and far away from both the transmitter and receiver. So we can simplify it as single effective reflection coefficient. And it's important to note that if we look at this composite channel uh, matrix, that is uh, a submission of uh, rank one matrix, first term and rank one matrix. So now it's not only eta, the largest scale fading the channel that quantify or relate the, the impact of the position to the share of rate, but also the relation between these two matrix, two rank one matrices. And this relation, uh, like uh, what is uh, also important in uh, quantifying the position, is the relation between H1 node, the transmitter response vector uh, for the direct channel, and H1 IRS, the transmitter transmit response vector for the reflected channel series, and also the relation between H2 node and H2 IRS, the receive response vector for the uh, direct link and link through uh, RIS. Uh, this relation simply will tell us what is the source of the channel capacity we get. If uh, like these two vectors are orthogonal to each other, H1 node is H1 IRS, H2 node H2 IRS, at this moment we will have a rank two channel matrix based on single value decomposition. So the deployment of risk under this, uh, to, uh, uh, like when they are orthogonal, will only result in creating additional degree of freedom, extra channel for communication. But if uh, one of the two channels are uh, aligned to other, at this moment, uh, the channel, uh, composite channel will be also rank one, will stay rank one. So the deployment of the risk will result only in uh, excess power gain. And in other scenario between this signality and the like aligned with vector aligned, it will be a mixture of poles. 
So uh, we define in order to relate uh, this like relation source of uh, capacity we get uh, to the position, we define a metric called knowledge test metric, where this metric is bounded between zero and one. And when it's equal one, it's like uh, means that uh, the two channel uh, transmit and receive response vector are orthogonal to each other. And the deployment of risk only will result in creating extra uh, degree freedom. When it's equal zero, it means that only will result in uh, extra power gain. Uh, also more important is that uh, the knowledge test metric mainly depend on uh, the distinct uh, uh, of the spatial angle for the channels through the risk and the direct channel. And this will create an important uh, trade-off between the knowledge test metric and the large scale fading channel. In case we would like to have a high knowledge test metric, we would like to have distinct spatial angle for the direct and reflected channels who are imposed at this moment to place the risk far away from poles, the transmitter and the receiver. So this will increase the larger scale fitting each other. And if we would like to have low knowledge space metric, uh, at this moment, uh, this is spatial angle have to be similar to each other. So are imposed to place the risk close to the transmitter or the receiver. And uh, if we look at uh, the figure to the left, which is the knowledge space metric versus the XY position, we could see it's uh, bounded from zero to one. And the position that uh, it achieve uh, uh, value that's close to one is the position that's far away from the transmitter receiver. And of course, this position have high large scale fading. And the position that achieve value close to zero is the position which is like uh, close to the transmitter receiver and this uh, have low large scale fading. If we look at the figure to the right, which is a shiver rate versus the XY position, We'll find that in this scenario, it's different than the SISO scenario. In SISO, it's always best to place close to transmitter receiver, but now it's become uh, far, could be also good, far placement, because this far placement will typically create extra degree freedom, and near placement will also create excess power gain. So, a line of sight pulls far and near could be promising for, uh, for the deployment of the risk. However, as the rank of the channel matrix increase, like as the uh, channel become more rich with multi-pass components or the rising factor uh, decays, uh, uh, we could see that the far efficient region of operation will uh, shrink until they gradually disappear in case of uh, really fading a channel, because in this uh, channel, the channel is already full rank and we are not interested at all in creating extra degree freedom because it's already uh, four rank will have full uh, sub channel in this channel. So we could say that in this aided uh, MIMO system, uh, depending on the propagation environment, if it's line of sight, we can put it uh, far or near. If it's like uh, uh, rich scattering or uh, uh, rich scattering, we should be uh, placed to the transmitter or receiver. So now I speak about our third paper, risk for polarization shift key. So the current research on uh, in risk is mainly focusing on uh, exploiting its uh, pin focusing and steering ability. However, a promising function of the risk is it can also control the polarization state of the reflected waves on it. Uh, the polarization state of the electromagnetic wave uh, represents or describes the orientation of the electric field with, uh, with respect to the direction of propagation. And there are three possible polarization, polarization states, linear polarization state, circular, and elliptical. Uh, risk polarization manipulation become possible thanks to the deployment of dual polarized reflecting elements. This dual polarized, dual polarized reflecting element could induce two or excite two uh, orthogonal polarization state for the reflected wave and induce a controllable phase shift for each polarization state. So in the figure to right, we'll have a dual uh, polarized reflecting element of slant 45, slant negative 45. And figure to the left, we'll have the uh, focus or zoom on the single element. We could see that we'll have an incident wave and the reflecting element will excite, will excite two orthogonal state of uh, waves with uh, two waves with two orthogonal state of polarization. And it will induce two, and it can induce two independent phase shift for each polarization state. 
so given that we can control the phase shift difference between the two waves, the red and the blue, we can at this moment control the polarization state of the resultant wave, the sum of the red and the blue. In case we induce or we set the phase shift difference to be zero, we'll have a vertical polarized wave. In case it uh, will be pi, we will have a horizontal polarized wave. If we uh, like pi over two, negative pi over two, we'll have right hand circular polarized and left hand circular polarized wave. Uh, moreover, one of the promising application uh, for the risk is to access to act as an access point for information transfer. In this application, the risk is uh, connected to a data source and would like to encode uh, the, this uh, information towards the uh, receiver. Typically, they depend on like an ambient or dedicated RF source to fulfill uh, this uh, application. And this data source, for example, can be some sensor that is connected to the RIS and has direct connection to, and that collects some measurement and has direct connection to the RIS. And this application could be promising in wireless sensor network. So in this paper, we try to use this important function, which is the RIS can control the polarization state of the reflected wave to uh, perform this important application, which is the RIS will act as an access point. And we achieve this by performing polarization shifting moderation. Uh, we assume a line of sight environment, and this environment, the orthogonality between two orthogonal polarization states, for example, vertical and horizontal, will be maintained through the RSA channel, will stay orthogonal. But uh, typically, like polarization mismatch or polarization uh, rotation occur uh, in the RSA channel. And this happened due to the different orientation between the dual polarized received wave and the dual polarized receiver. So we proposed two different uh, schemes. The first scheme, uh, there is uh, encode the information data bit in terms of the polarization state of the reflected wave without any respect to this polarization mismatch loss. Uh, which means in this scheme that the receiver itself have to compensate for the polarization mismatch loss or rotation to correct, uh, to detect the data correctly. In the second scheme, there is uh, encode the information data in the polarization state of the composite wire set channel, the overall wire set channel, which means that in this uh, scheme, second scheme, there is take account of this polarization mismatch and uh, correct for it or compensate for it itself, such that the receiver can uh, like use non-coherent detector and uh, don't care about this polarization mismatch. So uh, and this, this one is a sample uh, figure, like uh, the simulation parameter of this uh, paper as shown in this table, where here we simulate the bit error rate versus the risk surface area for uh, the two scheme proposed. And scheme one, uh, its performance is independent of the polarization mismatch angle. While scheme two, we show that uh, the performance is dependent on uh, the polarization mismatch angle. So we simulated for three different polarization mismatch angles, zero, 10, and 45. We could see that scheme one achieved the best performance. And while scheme two achieved the same performance to scheme one, only if uh, the polarization mismatch angle uh, is zero. And after that, the performance in descending order for scheme two for 10 uh, degree and after that 45 degree for polarization mismatch angle. Moreover, we compare this scheme with uh, the benchmark scheme, which is the risk uh, is deployed to perform amplitude shifting moderation. Uh, it depends on either uh, turning on or off all the elements in the risk to perform amplitude shifting. And we did this uh, like benchmark scheme for two uh, scenarios. Uh, when we PETA is known as the receiver, and when PETA is unknown and is at the receiver, we could see that the performance of the risk aided amplitude shift king, given that PETA is unknown, uh, is the worst uh, like performance. And after that, risk aided amplitude shift king, when PETA is known and scheme two, their performance are interchangeable depending on the value of the PETA. So now I speak about our fourth uh, idea, our paper, risk for differential polarization shift again. And this paper is same as the third paper, but instead of performing conventional polarization shift again, we perform differential polarization shift again. 
So in this differential polarization of the gain, the data bits are encoded over two consecutive reflection frames. In particular, the RIS has two or similar state of polarization. For example, here, stand 45, stand negative 45. The RIS has two options for each reflection frame, either preserve the state of polarization or switch it uh, with respect to the last reflection frame. So for example, for the case of uh, bit input equal uh, zero, it's going to preserve the state of polarization at time s and k with respect to time s and k minus one. And in case one, it's going to switch it to, an, to the other possible orthogonal polarization state. And by doing this, uh, we encode the data differentially. So uh, in short, we encode the data in the change of the state of polarization state. Uh, from one uh, reflection frame to the other reflection frame. And by doing this, given that the polarization mismatch angle is uh, constant within the two reflection frames, uh, we become immune to the polarization mismatch angle or uh, loss that occurs in the architecture, which means that this scheme can use non-coherent de detector. And the main difference here is that uh, this scheme doesn't care at all uh, uh, about the polarization mismatch angle. It doesn't correct it by the receiver or by the race itself. And this is the advantage of this scheme. So in this figure, we simulate pit error rate versus risk area for the two, for uh, risk aided conventional polarization shifting king and risk aided differential polarization shifting king. And the, uh, the risk aided uh, convention has better performance. And this is expected because. Uh, in like a aided differential or, or differential position shifting, we depend on two consecutive received uh, signal. We try to like check if the state of position changed or not. So we have two noise samples that affect the performance and result in worse performance. However, this uh, uh, differential is immune to polarization mismatch. Here we like uh, compare a risk aided uh, Conventional and differential, given that there is polarization mismatch uh, estimation error. We model this error as zero mean Gaussian distribution of standard deviation denoted by sigma A, where sigma A represents the accuracy of our estimator. The, the performance of uh, differential is immune to the polarization mismatch angle. So it has the same performance as last figure. And the performance of conventional is affected by the polarization mismatch angle. And here comes the advantage of differential that at certain point, given that there is like a estimation error in polarization mismatch angle, could achieve better performance than convention. So at the end, I would like to thank uh, everyone here in the room and in Zoom and looking forward to have all your questions. Yeah. Thank you, Ahmad. Thanks.